All right, Raymond, walk with me.
a sheet for this one? Shire Medical at West Point Transport has arrested at this time. The patient does not have a pulse, the patient is not breathing. Uh, hey guys, 17 year old with a head injury. Yeah. But she arrested about two minutes ago. So we don't have a pulse right now. We're working yeah, physically. Yeah, the patient arrested for now. Aside from the abrasion to the arm. Alright, so our patient's arrested and we're going to go to the pulse facility. We're just going to do CPR uh, for a minute here for a show. And y'all can leave and then we're going to go. What happened, sir? Do you know what happened? Uh, is, is Lisa Darcy.
need for any more transport vehicles at your scene? Are all patients transported off the scene? hurting that poor little fella. Okay, Mike, first of all, your name? Michael Valdez. Mike, tell me a little bit about this program. The program is designed to em emphasize the, the consequences of drinking and driving. Uh, okay. Okay, Mike, tell me a little bit of the pro program. Well, the program when Montgomery County came into existence in 1999, that shattered lives. We uh, emphasize and intend to educate, or intend to educate, uh, young people about the consequences of drinking and driving, and the, and the choices that they're, they're faced with every day as teenagers, and in the peer pressure that, that accompanies that that age group and in, in being in high school. Uh, it's not just about drinking, not just about driving. It's about making the choice to, and, and choice of riding with somebody that might be drinking and driving. Uh, and life is all about decisions and all about consequences. Every, every decision one makes, there's a consequence. It might be positive, it could be negative. Uh, but that's what we try to do in as, in as dramatic and re in real life fashion as we can is to emphasize those choices that, they, that these kids are faced with every day. And, and our, our aim is to show them the, the ultimate consequence of making the wrong choice. They usually do these, what, just prior to the to a prom? Or well, we try, we, well we do, because we do so many within, within a spring semester, we might do them before spring break, we might do them uh, during, uh, I, before prom as well, as, and before graduation. These are three major events in, in, in high school. Now we've got Montgomery County, I know, has known quite a few of the fatals we've got around Montgomery County. Does it seem like it's slowed down with the kids now? Well, we can, I, I can never tell you that, that someone doesn't die because of us doing this program. All I know is that it has a positive effect. 
it has a long, long term effect because we hear back from our kids uh, who are in college who might even write papers about this program. Uh, and even those that are, are continue to make choices or face with the choices as time goes on, they, they continue to write to us and talk, call us and tell us about the things that they did differently uh, because of what they've, they've learned in our program. What's it take to put a program like this together? I mean, you had a lot of resources pulled in today to do this. And you had, what, how many students here with Caney Creek today? In, in Caney Creek, we've got 50 participants, but obviously the entire school, we, we intend to impact the entire school, and I think that's what happens. Uh, as we as the day goes on, obviously we'll continue pulling out kids during, during the day, but we're going to take these 50 with us on a retreat for tonight, uh, and, and they'll get some more information and hear some speakers as well. And, and, and the impact that they'll have when they come back tomorrow and be able to talk to their friends and their family uh, is even more far-reaching, and, th and that's the goal that we have, is to try to reach as many people as we can. Uh, and these, as I call them, these kids are now our emissaries, and they will continue to, uh, to impact the people around them and their, their loved ones and their families and friends as well. How many students and family members did you figure were out here today? Oh, there were, there were probably about 800 people out here watching the, watching the, the accident scene. Okay, something like this, I mean, it's got to take some time, planning, planning stages. What kind of time does it take putting all this, something like this together? Well, we, you know, obviously we, we have a lot of resources available to us, and, and as I tell everybody, this is not just our program, this is a community program, and the community resources are, that come together to put this program on are uh, you know, phenomenal. I mean, there, there are many resources, different agencies lend their resources, their time, their, their energy to, to come out and do this, uh, the different volunteers, and we have a slew of volunteers that come out and with us each, each program in order to put this program on, uh, as well as the, just the donors that, that help us with the program, because you know, we're fully funded by donations only. So. Sarah also had been involved in the flag corps and present, represented Candy Creek at their first female mascot, Patty Panther. Sarah was a good person who loved all her friends dearly. Sarah had recently received her acceptance letter to East Texas Baptist University in Marshall, Texas, where she chose to pursue a nursing degree. Sarah was a very caring friend and a wonderful big sister. Sarah was survived by her parents, Mike and Kim Bennett, five sisters, high Dallas Page was born on January 26, 1989 in Houston, Texas, and she went to be with her Lord and Savior on May 3, 2007, when she was tragically killed by a drunk driver. Dallas's short but broad life was filled with love and compassion for many people. She loved being with her family, Michael, friends, and her cats, and caring in all the little things that she did in everyone's lives she touched. She got the greatest joy in being in the middle of anything, whether playing basketball, hanging out with family, or just hanging out with her, or to attend Texas A&M to be a She wanted to be an English teacher and get 
back to others. And a bright smile and cheery disposition will, not, will be missed, but not forgotten. Her short life includes playing basketball and being a baseball manager. She was also a member of the National Honor Society and a member of Mims Baptist Church for the last 13 years. Dallas is preceded in death by her grandparents, Doug and Lois Pate, and, a, and her uncle, Randy Wright. She is survived by her loving parents, Jim, Jean, and Kemp Pate, brothers Ricky and Cody. The family will be receiving guests from 7 p.m. to 9 p.m. on May the 7th. Celebration of her life will be held at Mims Baptist Church on May the 8th at 10 a.m., followed by a burial at the Cashmere Cemetery. Cemetery. Honorary Paul Bears for the Caney Creek Girls varsity basketball team. In lieu of flowers, the family requests that donations be sent to Shattered Lives in Montgomery County. All right. There? Yeah, right there. <laughs> Are you going to ask me questions? Yeah, I'll ask you. Okay, first of all, your name? Angela Fountain. Spell your last name? F-O-U-N-T-A-I-N. So that's an easy one right there. Okay. Now, tell me a little bit about the program and how you're involved in it. I've been involved with the Shattered Lives program in Montgomery County since uh, early 2000, and I've been participating in this program every year since. Um, I'm actually the law enforcement coordinator and also assistant coordinator of the overnight retreat with the kids. You've been, I mean, you work this area, you seem like you've formed a lot of a bond with a lot of these kids. I've seen you out here on the streets working with them and all. The, tell me a little bit about this bond and how it's how it's really affected the kids. And I mean, I've seen you before too, with uh, just really going overboard trying to help them. Uh, you know, I truly uh, have a work ethic of I treat others like I would expect to be treated. Uh, but also there's consequences to be paid when poor choices are made. Um, my involvement in this program gives me a chance to show at least young people that there are other options than making poor choices. And maybe if I can stop one through my actions in this program when they're faced with either making the right choice or the wrong choice, maybe they'll stop and remember this program, something about it, that may make them and lead them in the right direction and it may save their life or somebody else's life. And too often in this county, uh, that's not always the case. And um, we, we lose too many on the highways and we're just trying to make a difference so we can bring that number down as far as possible. I mean, you've had kids call you late at night even. I'm, I'm here, I've been drinking, come pick me up. I do. Uh, every program that I do, I do offer uh, my numbers to every, each and every kid and because not every uh, student involved in these programs not all of them have people that they can call uh, to get them to a safe place and while they are to be commended for making the right choice I always offer my services to come and pick them up no matter what time of the day or not uh, just so I can ensure that that is one less fatality that we have to work in this county. What is it with the kids? They seem like they're invincible. I mean like nothing can hurt them. It's the speed, the drinking, everything else just seems like they're Nothing's going to happen to them. I think a lot of it has to do with uh, that person on a on a person to person basis. Their life has not been affected immediately uh, by the results of poor decision making. Um, that is a lot of it. And you know, oftentimes people, whether they be young or older, uh, mature or immature, responsible or irresponsible, um, nobody thinks it's ever going to happen to them. It's always somebody else in another town, in another place. First of all, tell me your name. Uh, my name is Fable Harder. It's Fable, what is it? Harder. Fable, tell me how you were involved in this this morning. Um, I was in the accident scene. I was the driver of a van which flipped over and I had 
four other people, five I think, and four of them died on the scene. One was taken to the hospital, and I myself was taken to the funeral home. How, what kind of feeling? I mean, when they zipped that body bag up on you? Um, it was scary because um, I had just um, been revealed to my mom, and I could hear her crying, and it was hard for me not to cry. But it was just a scary feeling. Being, I mean, it's something that I don't ever want to experience again anytime soon. But um, it was something that I'll never forget. Okay, and Fable, how do you spell your first name? F A B L E. Okay, all right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm.